My name is Smith, Cornelius A. Smith. I am the ambassador for the Bahamas to the United States of America. I'm just an island boy, born in Long Island. I uh, went to school in Long Island for until 11 or 12, then went off to, to Nassau. Um, went to, a, uh, got my um, senior education in Nassau and then on to a teacher training college. Um, later on, w went on to teach in uh, a couple of the islands, ended up here in Grand Bahama at Smith's Point um, back in the late 50s. I stayed in Grand Bahama, uh, was seconded to the uh, customs department for some years, and then later on left the customs department, went into my uh, own business. I had a custom brokerage business for a while, um, a travel business, and then later on joined Syntex and worked for them for many, many years. Um, in 1982, determined that uh, I was beginning to feel that I could be of some service at the uh, parliamentary level, offered as a candidate for the Free National Movement in 1982 to run for the um, Pine Ridge constituency and have been re-elected for four consecutive five-year terms. So I've spent 20 years in Parliament. Ten years of those have been in government and ten years of those have been in the opposition. I've been appointed in November, um, started to work in mid-December, um, but as you know, Christmas came along and so there's very little to do uh, between middle to the end of December. But um, first January, it just happened that because of the way the rotation of the chair at the, as, at the OAS is, that I found myself, the Bahamas that is, found itself as chair of the OAS. Um, and that has really been one exciting uh, opportunity for me. The OAS is the Organization of American States. All of the states in the uh, Western Hemisphere, Canada, United States, uh, South Central America, the Caribbean, uh, 35 countries uh, have all signed an agreement to work together for the hemisphere in areas of security, in areas of poverty reduction, in areas of um, uh, preventing criminal activities. Um, and as I said, uh, the chair rotates and a country has three months uh, in which it takes responsibility to chair the organization. And that's a gr real great responsibility because you are chairperson of this international hemispheric organization that are dealing with all sorts of hemispheric problems. And as chair, you have responsibility f to set the agenda, uh, to look at the issues that are going to be discussed, uh, to meet with uh, visiting uh, ministers of foreign affairs, to meet with heads of governments, to talk through the issues that they feel that affect them, and issues which they feel the OAS might be able to um, provide some assistance and help. Um, during my uh, chairmanship, uh, I've had uh, two major issues confronting the uh, OAS. One of them had to do with the um, what I call uh, the developing democracy in Haiti. As you are aware, um, Haiti is just beginning to move towards the path of democracy, but they have great difficulty because of the lack of manpower, because of the lack of infrastructure, the lack of financing, uh, the, the lack of a structural government uh, in place makes it very difficult for um, the government to, to operate. The ambassador uh, appointment is one that's in the gift of the prime minister. Prime, the prime minister determines who would um, be selected and appointed to represent uh, the country at the various capitals of the world. Um, and one day I had a call from the Prime Minister and he asked me whether I would be interested um, in representing the Bahamas outside of the Bahamas. I told him I would. Um, and later on he called me back and asked me, how, how about Washington? And I says, 
if that's where you think I can best serve, I'd be glad to go. And that's the way the appointment came, came about. As ambassador for the United States, I have responsibility for uh, three uh, separate uh, distinct um, divisions. We have a mission in um, Washington, um, which does both um, uh, diplomatic work as well as counselor work. We have a counselor uh, office in Miami, and as you would imagine, because of the tremendous amount of transportation and um, travel between Miami and the Bahamas, uh, that that's a very active um, counselor. Um, and then we have one in New York. And in addition to that, we also have a mission at the United Nations. In terms of the size of our country versus the, um, the ratio of staff to the size of the country, we're just about where we ought to be. I don't think we need more people. What I think we need to do is we need to have um, a lot more skills uh, uh, in and among our people, and we're going to be doing some things to develop that skill. We need people who are able, first of all, to speak uh, languages, foreign languages. Uh, it's an important factor in, in, in the whole exercise of things. We need people who are who have, um, basically, as a, as a diplomat, you want somebody who is very well read, who is up on world affairs, who is able to communicate the interests of the Bahamas to the international community, and also be able to understand um, what's happening within the, the countries which we are dealing with, so that that person um, can always uh, represent the Bahamas well. Um, people with uh, degrees in economics, in law, in um, language are the kind of people that, that best suits what, we, what we're looking for. Washington's a great city, uh, uh, well laid out, um, but most of all, you know, it's the capital of the, um, it's what I call the political capital of the United States and to a great degree maybe the political capital of the world. Um, it's uh, in Washington and as an ambassador, one has to be begun to realize that if you're going to uh, promote the Bahamas and promote the interests of the Bahamas, you've got to promote that at the level uh, where decisions are being taken. And so my role um, is to uh, interact with and meet with and engage with the congressman, um, with uh, the uh, mayor, uh, with all of the ambassadors from all the various countries. We've got to know what is happening on Capitol Hill to see what kind of legislation are being thought about and being discussed. And if we find that those legislations are going to affect the Bahamas in a negative way, then we have to find ways and means of trying to influence those legislation um, uh, so that it would not negatively affect the Bahamas. One of the things that I want to do in Washington is to, to be able to um, get the Bahamians who have been there for a long time, get them together as a unit uh, so that we could, uh, uh, t two things, um, first of all, we could get them beginning to work with one another, they could begin to do networking because you have um, various um, professionals, um, somebody in the um, printing business, somebody who is a doctor or a lawyer, uh, we can get them together and they could begin to network and do business with one another. So that's one of the reasons we pull them together. Second thing is that I really believe that we have an opportunity to form a, an association of Bahamians who are in Washington who we could get to come back to the Bahamas who could then perhaps adopt a school or, 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 or a charity or something that they could feel, listen, uh, we the Bahamians in Washington have adopted the Jack Haywood School in which we are going to prov provide, let's say, a library or we're going to provide um, something of sin significance and we're going to bring the professionals to talk to students um, 
at the school that they have adopted. Um, and so I want, I want to be able to um, u utilize the talent that we have in Washington, let them bring some of that talent back to the Bahamas and use it to help to promote not only Washington and them, themselves, but promote the Bahamas in a whole unique way. I have an interesting history. A lot of people talk about the dissident eight that left in 1970. Um, I, I left in 69. Um, I left in 69 because, and it was over a very, uh, for me, a very important issue. Um, it was the issue of the Hawksville Creek Agreement and the issue of how the government was, in my view, beginning to erode all of the gains that were being um, gotten under the Hawksville Creek Agreement um, previous to 1969, and um, I parted company with the Progressive Liberal Party uh, since then. Uh, the dissident aid came in 19, 1970, and they welcomed me and I welcomed them. The younger people who are now involved in politics, uh, they're doing a great job. Um, those in opposition are doing their jobs in terms of trying to um, promote their own ideas. And those in government are holding their own and um, putting forth some programs for development. And uh, I, I feel good about um, the future of our country in terms of the, the, the politics, uh, the kind of acrimony that we had in the 50s and 60s uh, have begun to die down and a new breed of politicians have come, come forward. And that's all good for the country. The world is in transition. Um, uh, transition in a number of ways. Uh, there is the, the economic meltdown and that's going to have tremendous effect for the next two or three years of the quality of life all over the world and the Bahamas is not going to escape that. Um, and so one of the things I say to Bahamians is that uh, we have to recognize that we are part of a global community that what happens in Russia, in China, in the United States, in Great Britain will affect us. And so as we go through this economic downturn, um, Bahamians have got to um, also cut their suit to fit the cloth that they have. Um, they have to recognize that, that the splurges of yesterday uh, will not be available for the next year or so. Secondly, um, uh, my in Washington, what I began to recognize is the image that the Bahamas has in the international community. Even though we are a small country, we have um, a director at the international at the World Bank. We have a director at the um, uh, I. Um, IMF. Um, we have um, one of the one of uh, a Bahamian who is a uh, world famous neurosurgeon. Um, we we have capable Bahamians serving in important posts uh, in Washington and in the world. Um, from that, I would like to appeal to Bahamians, particularly young Bahamians to recognize that there should be nothing that should stop them from achieving what they want to achieve. The only thing would stop them is their own lack of interest. And so I want to appeal to them to grab a hold of the opportunity that they have, get the best education that they have, expose themselves, travel, because in that way, they're going to be able to make much more contribution to the Bahamas and to the world than if they continue to um, stay away from getting a good education or B, only stay in their own little small environment of Nassau or Grand Bahamas.